Yes, everybody, my name is Stephen Nelson. This is Full Time Devils. Me and Jay are going to go and jump off a cliff. I mean, uh, <laughs> that was a different video. Um, I guess we're going to have to do a preview for Newcastle. Do we have to? Yes, we do. Come on. This is what we do. We do previews. Okay, right. So, uh, we haven't won away since Paris. Right, consistency. Get you a bit get closer to the Sorry. Mic. Um, consistency is a yeah. good one, yeah. There you go. Um, that's a positive, <laughs> I think. Uh, that's a long time ago, that. Oh, man, it seems like a in lot longer as well. Do you, if you want to really depress yourself? No, I don't. Go and watch the no, Aditya no. Red's edit of uh, One Night in Paris. It's fucking mint. Genuinely. No I, wonder we haven't won since. Mate, we were talking about, well, you weren't, to be fair, but I was talking about winning the Champions League and finishing third at the time. <laughs> Maybe throwing the FA Cup in as well, do you know what I mean? Just as a, you know, yeah, just as some. Just some, so you got two trophies. Someone's keep us busy that weekend. Um, oh. And yeah, and it didn't quite pan out like, did it? When we were stood outside Old Trafford after Cardiff. <laughs> <laughs> Saying, what have we just I seen? I can't. What is going on? Put my finger on exactly what the hell has changed. Because, yeah, we, we said before we started, didn't we? Like, you've, you've seen four. Big internationals leave, uh, whether you rated them or not, in Herrera, Fellaini, uh, Sanchez, Lukaku, that just haven't been replaced. Yeah. Um, but, was, I mean, Lukaku was barely playing, Fellaini was, went early, like, Herrera played, but, like, did Herrera make that much difference? I think he did, mate. And I know, I know I'm know, oh, you fucking Herrera fanboy and all that, but I genuinely, I've said this to you before, I think I said it when I was on your podcast, can see the under Herrera shaped hole in our midfield. Oh, you, can, yeah. you can see what he used to do and how someone is not doing that anymore. But yes, would, Scott McTominay runs his out and all the rest. Would he, but, al- would he alone make any impact on the chances we've created or the, or the, or the lack of chances we've just created? Just little fine margins though. You're looking like the first half of so many games where we've had Paul Pogba so deep, getting hold of the ball. Keep maybe keeping hold of it too long because he's waiting for whatever he's trying to do. Something. If Herrera's there, Pogba's not. Mm. Pogba's further up the pitch, and Herrera's also. You mentioned it a minute ago. The experience, the exp- bit of game management. There's zero game no, management no, at United no, at all. Experience is one of the most overused excuses out there. But there are some players that have got that snidiness about them. That he's now's. the master of the dark arts, yeah, and right, Herrera right. is that guy. Yeah. When you're one nil up, you stay one nil up if you give him enough time to. So piss him many out. times, I think even like, what stands in my mind is probably because of where I was sat um, or stood um, for the semi final at Wembley against Spurs, and he was he just put a snide masterclass on. Oh, he did it against Everton as well. Do you remember when he with Ross Barkley pulled him back and got a booking? Yeah, uh, and but got, there's Ross times Barkley where he's booked. you can see him going, keep hold of it or get it up yeah. the pitch. Just little things like that that this young team does need and. You know, I'm not going to just dig your best mate Ashley Young out, but like when I look at him, I, I don't oh see decision making or leadership like that. I'm just, just no, 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 just, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. A, a you know, fair, a fair cut. I'm not going to. I'm not going to say I, I don't know where you come but from. But I also don't see that from Paul Pogba. I also don't see that from Jesse Lingard. Are we are we asking Marcus Rashford at 21 to do that thing? Can we ask Marcus Rashford to do anything else? Is there anything else we can pile onto the the Marcus Rashford blame I think stack? He's, uh, Free kicks, penalties, he's cutting the grass, uh, leadership, leading the line. Um, yeah, peeling the outside oranges, cutting the grass, driving the bus, literally. Anything else? Do you know what I mean? It's like Marcus Rashford FC, and he's to blame for everything. The um, that experience, I think, in its in no, I get itself, what you mean. Is overrated. Yeah, you know, Nemanja Matic is very experienced, but is he bringing that to yeah. the team at times? Probably not. But that little like. Like you said, the snidiness, the game management, the, the because telling Rojo's other players. Experienced, yes. but he's not. You, know, you wouldn't be looking at Rojo for game management, no, would you? No, 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 so, no, yo, but there's me. Jimmy Garner. I would look for game management. I yeah. think that's a young player that's got game. Axel Tuanzebe has got. Before you all start commenting the Arsenal thing, that was just a mistake. But yeah. I also think that's a, a mistake that he makes because he's not a left back. Yeah, because he's not used to being the fullback that has to. Um, launch it up the pitch. The options there are not to play it inside, but he's normally a centre half. He normally yeah. has the goalkeeper or another centre half to play to, or he goes wide. So I just think that was inexperience of being in a position. But normally, Axel's game management is very, very good. Yeah, and you know, I just, I just don't see enough of those football brains in our team. Well, you've got a silent goalkeeper for starters. That's annoying. Yeah. Harry that is M- a big weakness of his actually. It is massively. You've got Harry Maguire coming, who's someone who could do that. 
Seems like he does do yeah, it. Yeah, he does, yeah. So maybe, you know, like... I've seen Lindelof do it. Lindelof, yeah. I've uh, seen Phil Jones do it as well, which people will probably laugh at, but... No, no, no. You do see, you do see him yeah. do it. Luke Shaw doesn't do it at all, I don't think. Um, Wan-Bissaka, again, he's a young lad. He's only just come in. That's probably not his, what you expect from him. Pereira, Fred, Matic. Matt does it. Pereira's Matter does it. game management is fucking dreadful. <sighs> You know, there's a few people say you could take the word management out of that sentence at times. Well, I just think, you know, this, if you just said his decision-making in general, because it, it reminds me a little bit of Nani, not in terms of how he plays the game, but in terms of what he does in possession <laughs> yeah, sometimes, yeah. where you just go... But the, the, he hasn't got the Nani, like, get-out-of-jail-free card of scoring an absolute worldie now and again. Really? Because I would argue he does. Does he? Yeah, he's, he's scored a couple of worldies. But over the course of, what, three no, seasons? Well, he's, not, he's not played anywhere near what yeah, Nani's All right, played. I get where you're coming from on that one, but... I think with Nani, you, you, were, you were willing to take the rough with a smooth because he was Did a match winner. Did my tits in Nani when he was here, but yeah. And that's yeah. another thing. We don't have match winners. No, and I don't think that's Even budget B-Tech match winners like Nani. No, <laughs> no we, we don't, don't have that. The thing is, like, the rose tinted glasses at the minute are just off the scale, aren't they? Because you, Nani's like, being spoken about like Ronaldo by a lot of United fans, and I've been that's guilty of it. I've been guilty of like proper praising him and all. Oh, but there was times when I was screaming at Nani, like, what? you doing like sometimes he was so annoying he was just wasteful frustrating so wasteful yeah and he's just like you think what is going through your mind to do why have you done that but like you say over the course of his United career he's got a lot of good goals and a lot of important ones as well and he was entertaining of nothing else and that's what we could do now <laughs> if he came back he'd be our best player Comfortably. Well, I just we've just done an eleven there. Uh, it's, by the time this video comes out, I go and look at my Twitter. I tweeted it before, and it was an eleven of players who are still playing that don't play for us anymore. And you just look at like the forward four: um, Sanchez, Memphis, Zaha, Lukaku, and you go, "No, well, there's goals there." Zaha, Zaha was the one that stood out for me because I got lost it last in the summer when we were linked with him, saying I'd have him back. Oh, yeah. But again, no, he's a he's a match winner. He's an handful, and I don't think we've got many of them at the minute. Not many of them. I've just. I mean, we'll get to the eleven, and uh, but I, I was writing my eleven out, and I was just going. There's no creativity. There's no match winners. You can go. He might scrab you a goal, but like, there's no one who's just like. When you look at the team sheet, sometimes and you go, oh, go on, let's get all rose tinted again. Play the music, right? If we had, yo, when we used to have Rooney, and Ronaldo, and Ryan Giggs, and Joe, some fucking top draw. Even players. like your. So called not stu- superstars, your average players, if you want to call them that, were pretty mint. Like your likes of, you know, you put your Darren Fletchers, your, your Gary Nevilles, you, they were like, they did exactly what you wanted them to do. And they gave you 7 out of 10 nearly every game. Well, Scott you know McTominay I mean? is one player of the month, uh, and he probably was the best of a bad bunch, but fundamentally, he just didn't fuck up as much as the rest of them. He didn't do anything spectacular. He didn't, I think he's. And this might this in his defence might be um uh what's the word? Instructions. Um but he keeps it a bit too safe. We're lacking someone who can pass pass a ball through the lines, we're lacking a ball into the final third, and for me McTominay's kept it extremely safe. Um now Pogba is supposed to be that guy, like you've been saying, he's he's ten yards too deep. I do think a change of formation is definitely needed. Just to shake the funk of us up. And do you know what? When you actually look at the, the result against uh, AZ Altmar, when you strip back everything, the result wasn't a bad result. You can live a with draw it. in Europe away. Not the terrible we, result. We were talking earlier about, early off camera about Chucky. He tweeted something like that and everyone yeah. was going mad at him. Yeah. Like, but he's right because yeah. that was it. Don't lose away. Win your home games. And if you manage to pick up an extra victory out of the three on the road, you've got 12, 14 points and you've just smashed your group. Yeah. But, we needed the win for confidence and momentum and to shut some of the noise oh, up. It's just that is horrendous. Non stop. And you said something on your, one of your uh, reviews, I think it was after, um, it might have been after West Ham, I'm not sure, I might be misremembering. But you remember you said it's very Arsenal to go, like, look at the calendar year to go the back end of last season and this season. Oh, we were top of the league if you look at the last. 40 games or whatever. If you only look at matches played on Sunday after 4 o'clock, we was... Yeah, yeah it's just <laughs> nonsense, I get that. And that's what everyone's doing volley now and it's like, you know, going back to that season and I've been guilty of it, I think we all have. And I think, you know, you have to take this season on face value but even taking this season on face value, it's not great, it's just not quite as bad as some people making out. You can look at the individual games other than West Ham, it's not been that bad. 
no, away from home, which you, you know, you stack all the results next away to from each home other. because I know Palace at home was was terrible. You stack all the results up next to each other, and the writing's on the wall. And we went into the season. Certainly, no one predicted United to win the league. Few predicted. I think I said we could come into the top four. Yeah, and I still believe we could have come in the top four. I don't think we can now. I think we probably still could have come in the top four because look how bad some of the other teams in the top four. Are well, it's it's up for grabs, mate. You you completely right. Like you look, every team has got issues. Every team has got flaws. Every team has got inconsistencies. No, man, apart from a couple. No, no, sorry. In the top four mix, yeah, Liverpool and City. I don't. This is how bad it is. I don't even cons- I don't even worry about them anymore. I think they're just, they're just out of everyone's league, and yeah. it pains me to say that. But if you look at Chelsea, you look at Spurs, you look at Arsenal, you look at Leicester. There's flaws there, and these are the teams that are going to be in the mix for top four. And you think they've all got issues, they've all had bad results, they've all got managers who've got some form of question mark over them. Yeah. So it's doable, but not at the minute, and not with this current United squad. We've just not got the numbers, we've not got the... the, the I don't want to say no, talent, because I think we have got the talent. No, we haven't, just, got, the ta- we haven't you, got the talent. Do you think? Um, no, we haven't got the talent. Maybe we are, yeah. No, right, fundamentally, like, um, I, I've used this argument a few times, and people sort of misheard, I think, what Berber said. Berber agreed with me when I said that. was that. a good interview, by the way. Thank you very like much. Um, Berber agreed with me when I said, I don't think Fergie wins this. And then we went deeper into it, and I was like, no, I think you need more of a team. It's not just about a couple of good players. You need a, a team capable of winning. And he did agree with that. He said there was always this respect thing for Fergie, but he wasn't disagreeing with what I said yeah. in terms of, like, you do need a team. Now, Sir Alex Ferguson went a few years when he had all of the security – at the, the board and the confidence of everybody around and he had every single player in that squad was his right he wasn't dealing with nine other managers shit and cast offs that we hadn't been able to get rid of everybody in there was his he'd already won leagues he'd already won european cups and then come the mid 2000s and he, you got to remember this was with roy Keane, rude van nistelrooy rooney ronaldo Giggs, skulls rio ferdinand this is a serious... Like they're, no one's going to argue that they're world-class players. No, they are. Undoubtedly, yeah. right? And Fergie didn't win the league for three years with those players. So don't tell me Fergie is going to come in and win a fucking league with Phil Jones and with current Phil Jones. Because Phil Jones was never a starter in any of them teams. He was always the backup. This is the problem. Ashley Unger yeah. fullback. And fucking this midfield of Fred and McTominay looks promising, but let's be honest... He doesn't start in any other era of Fergie. And then what we've got currently going on up front, we we was looking around and saying, Marshall, Marcus, what we need is record seasons out of you two, and it probably still won't be good enough. Yeah, like, think, you yeah. two have never got 20 goals, either of you. <laughs> and now probably <laughs> both of you need to get yeah, 20 goals. Yeah, at least. Is that all right? Yeah. Jesse, can you aim with 15? Then we'll be all right. Do you know what I mean? Mason, put your own work down. Come yeah. over here and listen. <laughs> <laughs> like, we're going to need you to chip well, it with about a dozen. Like, is that all right? I think it was McCullough who said we need, like, he said oh, oh, he expected 50 goals before Martial and Marcus. And then I added, like, oh, and I think Jesse's going to get 10, 10 as well. So you can get 60 out of them three. So I'm going to find that clip. Yeah. It's <laughs> uh, already aged really well. I wouldn't mind after Chelsea. I was like, look, see, <laughs> they're on the way. <laughs> I told you. Um, but no, you're right. We need record numbers from, from our players who've never reached those numbers and no, it's, 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 it's just hope Sanchez it, it? had had 34 goals I think it was for, for Arsenal at one point yeah. Lukaku's at United had nearly 30 goals and we was like anyway best of luck lads well, enjoy like, Italy it's like why am, I, why am I turning on the Champions League right flicking through because there's no real reason for me to watch it and seeing Manchester United players in some cases literally United players playing in the Champions League and doing a good job whilst we're paying their wages or half of it what the <laughs> You know, what's that about? What is going on there? And it's like, yeah, get rid of these players. I don't think loads of people would have lost sleep over getting rid of Alexis Sanchez. But when you're now, and me, and we, you've just done an R11, struggling to fill the team, literally struggling. Like, uh, he's injured. Mate, All right. Um, is Chong going to play? <laughs> I, I, I'm not exaggerating. I know we'll get on to the 11s later. I think this is probably the weakest. Premier League starting eleven. I've had to pick on a preview. And it's not just the eleven, man, because you've got to remember we're dealing with two games a week. We're dealing with Thursday night football. You want to be able to freshen your squad yeah. up so you can go to Newcastle, who are also fighting for their lives. Oh, that sounds feels bad. But like, you want to be able to go there and put a team up. This is Manchester United. We should turn up, knobs out, smack them about, and yeah. fuck off home. That's what it's meant. Sorry, to be Brucey, about. but yeah. you know, here's another four 0 dicking. Exactly. Enjoy, Enjoy the the dole queue. <laughs> and instead, it'll be like. 
go there and then probably a draw. And then probably oh well <laughs> Longstaff's good, isn't he? Uh, you know. Oh that that Joe Linton, he's a decent player. Just excuses will start coming out or, you know, V A R summer or whatever. But yeah, it's just it's just painful at the minute and <laughs> the light of the tunnel seems very, very far away. It does and I'll always support manager and like people will say I've only been doing it because of Ollie. It's the same knobheads that were saying some shit that I, I was only supporting Joe's. I'll support all our managers. No, I'm with you. You know, I'd go back and like look at some of the shit I was getting because I was still saying I'm like, I, you'll here's what you'll never do. So don't fucking waste your energy typing it. You'll never see me demanding a manager sacked. No, I said I think it's time to go with Jose. About twelve hours before they sacked him. It's funny that because I know it sounds like you're jumping on a bandwagon, doesn't it? But I remember the Liverpool game. We was at an event in town, I think it was in Birkel or wherever, and I bumped into my mate who was very much Jose out. And I remember saying to him, I can't defend this. I can't defend these tactics. I can't defend what is going on. Because I'd always come. stuck up for him. And I was like, I know people say, oh, yeah, of course you did. Like, but I, I remember saying to him, um, Man United youth off Twitter, saying, like, I can't I can't defend this. It's just, you know, he's lost the plot here with this. Um, and obviously, you know, 12 hours later, whatever, he was gone. So, yeah, I'm with you, mate. I'm, I'm, I always think we should back the manager. And, and I think in the current climate as well, we can see what's going on. If only had come in and he'd spent 500 mil and he'd been here for four years and this is what we're watching, I'd be very much saying Klopp came eighth, what, was it twice? Yeah. Sorry? Klopp came eighth twice. Oh, yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah. Well, this is it. Klopp had time, he, you know, he, he was allowed to, to not necessarily fail, but find his feet. You know, remember the, the picture of the Scouts are celebrating a two-wall draw at West Brom, uh, you know, praising the, the cop for getting him over the line in that one. What's well, a lot about... You know, he, he went to the Europa League final, lost. Went to the League Cup final, lost. But then he gets to the Champions League final. And when you lose the Champions League final, people sort of stomach that a lot more. And especially when you're scoring 100 goals in yeah. the season or whatever. And then you follow it up the next season by winning it. And you can't take that away from him as much no. as I'd love to. No. But, like, there was a progression allowed yeah. to happen. And I remember immediately... Um, well, not immediately, I guess. Well, within, you know, eight, nine, ten months of him being there, he had an identical record to Rogers. That's what and I mean. Like, yeah. you go, there is no progression technically. Now, well, United with, with Oli, um, he's come in. He's one hundred percent cleared those decks. That Deadwood thing that we used to talk about all the time, he's pretty much done it. He's got to work on getting rid of it. It's our, it's half it's in fucking Italy. Yeah. You know, he's really managed yeah. to get rid of the Deadwood. Now, if you don't allow him the time, and this. You can kind of put this on the board. I'm sure you, you actually definitely can put this on the board. I think you can also definitely put this on the lack of um, a technical director or a director of football. But the fact that we didn't bring people in, and, and even those that we did bring in, which have been relatively successful, I wouldn't say they're all been perfect, but they are our better players at the moment, even yeah. though none of them won player a month, but they probably was in the mix for. The players that we've signed have been decent, but we, apart from Dan James, you know, um, wan and Maguire weren't exactly unearthed gems, were no, they? No, and I think we paid what you had to pay for them. Yeah. There's no bargain there. There's no, oh, we've done well there, getting wan for 50 mil. Yes, I'm not saying we shouldn't have bought him. <laughs> we should have, and I was one of the most sort of vocal supporters of getting him. And, I don't, you know, 50 million, yeah, he's worth it in my opinion. Yeah. 85 mil, whatever, for Maguire. Again, I wanted Maguire, and I thought if that's what we've got to pay, we need a leader at the back. Yeah. We need that central defender. But... You could throw a stone out the window and hit someone who could have made those deals happen for that money. Yeah, or identified like, them. Yeah, it wasn't like, oh, I've got a great scout, I've got someone here, you know, Ali Maguire. Yeah, Wan Bissaka. Like, like Moisley when he was at Sheffield United. <laughs> that was a long time ago. It just gets worse, doesn't it? It's just, uh, you know, the more we hear, the, the, the more painful it is. But yeah, this is why but we're, we're going on, or the, the club are going on, like, you know, this successful summer transfer window. And you just pick up on something you said earlier. You said Deadwood. Did we get rid of the Deadwood? Did we? Is that Deadwood, really? Well, yeah, because I is, think... Was there a Deadwood? Lukaku, no, that's different. All right, he would, I think we would have wanted to keep him. Yeah, he didn't all right, fair enough. Sanchez, uh, yeah, I'm with you. Lukaku, I'll be a hypocrite here because I did say I think it's probably time for him to move on for many reasons, not just for... I was sad that didn't work yeah, out. Yeah. Really sad. But, but he doesn't suit the way I think Oli wants to play. Yeah. He was definitely a Mourinho. Well, Oli made that, made that pretty clear, didn't he, when he came in? One of the first things he did was sort of make Marcus his main man. Um... And and even when Lukaku started scoring goals, he, he couldn't break his way into the team when the other lads were fit. So I get that, but it's just it's the whole replacement thing in it, and it's just this. The whole idea is okay. We're going to get rid of these. I'm going to ride the storm without many attacking options until either January or next summer. But I fuck, there better be a plan. But yeah, are imagine we, gonna, we go we... through January. Now a lot of people will pin on Ollie. He said he's happy with the team. Of course he fucking did, right? 
you got to remember, press conferences are a show. Yeah, They're either a show to those in the dressing room or a mm. show to those outside. They're rarely the truth. Mm. They're rarely the truth. They're, they're parts of the truth. Now, Mourinho used it to paint one agenda. Oli uses it to paint pretty much the opposite agenda. Mourinho uses them to go, I'm not happy. Yeah. And Oli wants to go, I'm happy, kind of. But yeah. we all know he's not fucking happy. We all know he's getting behind closed doors and going, you're fucking kidding me. Yeah. But... The way he approaches it, the way he approaches man management, I think he's just a different personality altogether to Jose. And I think because of that, some players have taken to him better. And for some reasons, well, for for those reasons, I can see why a lot of people go, he's just a yes man. I guarantee he's not being a yes man behind closed doors. Mm. But it doesn't put pressure on the board to act in public, so he better be fucking squeezing someone's nuts behind a closed yeah, doors. He, he if we go all the way through January... I, I do not want to see Oli go, I'm happy with this squad. I want him to go, yes, we definitely should bring in some reinforcements. There's a way to word it without... Well, I mean, as well, right, this sounds a little bit melodramatic, but I'll say it anyway. You've got to have, as a manager, a little bit of a care of duty with some of these young players. Mason Green was 17 years old, right? You can't be playing 18, him every no, week. Sorry, yeah, sorry, it's all right, he's past it. <laughs> Get rid, do you know what I mean? Who's the next big thing? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, you know... Um, the talk of Garner coming in, he's another youngster. Chong and Gomez, uh, I know Chong's 19, Gomez young. But you can't be relying on these players, relying on him. You need to, you know, we need to have other options. And if we haven't, and you've got to rely on them, then as a manager, you've got to say, this isn't acceptable. I can't be throwing these kids in week in, week out. The results are going to shit. The fans are turning, not turning against them, but are expecting a lot from them because they're still playing for Manchester United, no matter mm. how young they are. And they're knackered. They're physically just exhausted because I'm playing them all the time. I've got to bring someone in and all he's got to be strong about that, I think, because that's his responsibility as a manager and he must see that. He must see, like, you know, we're throwing kids in constantly and this isn't me and you've gone over this a million times so I won't rehash it, but this isn't a class of 92 scenario where you're augmenting a, an experienced, strong team with a smattering of youngsters. This is, we're now relying on youngsters. No, and the difference being, I think youngsters can always come in at fullback and the wing and get minutes. United have... Very famously, we struggled for a long time really bringing through any central defenders and we don't really bring through strikers. And because that striking position is such a difficult one to come through and one to get minutes in as well. Now, the, when the class of 92 came through, yes, they had Brian Robson, who was well on the way out by then, but they had um, Roy Keane, they had Paul Ince. They didn't get in midfield. They might have gone on the wing. Yeah, They didn't start over them. So they were the periphery positions. You know, Gary Neville came in at fullback. Phil Neville came in at fullback. They didn't play centre half. No, that was Bruce and Pallister. Yeah, and that was where they played. You know, and they had Cantona up front. Skulls played off him a couple of times, but fundamentally, it wasn't. You know, Andy Cole played up front. Yeah, yeah, of course. Cantona played up front. Yeah, Beckham went on the wing. Like these were periphery positions. We're asking Mason to lead the line at seventeen. We were asking Marcus still to be the main man at 21. Yeah. And we just said before we went on air, didn't we? Write him off at your peril now at 21. Yeah, he's been shit this season. Uh, and you know, I've got no problem saying that. Yeah. Despite what some of you think I say, he's been shit this season. Stop saying it, Jesse Lingard's a kid. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know the only people who say that are people who are joking? No me. one says that seriously. <laughs> but, like, if you judge Raheem Sterling at 21, Mate, you, got, if you judge Ronaldo yeah. at 21, you look stupid. Harry now, Kane. He could still go the other way. There's another one, he yeah. still could go the Danny yeah. Welbeck route. Yeah. I don't think he does. I think he's a step above that. Does he end up Ronaldo? No. Yeah. <laughs> but if he falls in between Welbeck and Ronaldo, he's probably yeah. still a very good professional. I think, the, yeah, I'm, I'm with you on Rashford. I'm sick of quoting stats about Ian Wright at 21, about Alan Shearer at Let 21. Let me throw you this one. Go on. Many people would agree Wayne Rooney was the best player in the world at 18. Or he was one of the best 18 year olds in the world ever. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Wayne Rooney, 18 to 21, yeah. scored a goal every 220 minutes. Right. Okay? Okay. It's not amazing. No. It's not bad. 200, yeah. 220 minutes. It's just outside of, it's like two and a bit games, yeah? Yeah. Do you know how long Marcus Rashford scores? Go on. 224 minutes. No one's called him the best 18-year-old in the world, or 19-year-old, or 20-year-old. And, and, although we're going, we were going through a transitional period, Still played with Keane, yeah. Rude, Ronaldo. Yeah, no. I don't see Wayne Rooney running along uh, alongside a lot of bunch of children. So, no, yeah. I'm not saying that he's going to have a career, anything like those lot. All I'm saying is, 
relax. Yeah, man. Just, Alan Shearer had scored about King 12 fucking yeah, first Yeah, he had one purple patch, yeah, in his final season. I think we were chatting to Laurie Ruttle from Athletic and he made a good point that, like, Harry Kane's record up to this point wasn't great. He said that though this is the time when some of these players started having their breakthrough season. I think Harry Kane had a breakthrough from yeah, 22 Yeah, I was open Marcus would do that now. Yeah, I think this is um, the season where Marcus, a lot of people expecting him to have a breakthrough season and the irony is he's probably having his worst season ever yeah. so far, which again, I'm with you, I, I'll criticise a player when he's not playing well regardless of the postcode they were born in. Um, so yeah, this is the season where we're expecting to kick on. But again, there's mitigating circumstances. People forget that. He's playing all the time when he shouldn't be. He's relying on for everything. He's playing alongside players that, again, we're looking at a 21 year to be the most experienced player. And this is the player. worst United yeah. team. So in memory for me, you've got to have a balance with it and say, yes, he's playing badly, but there are other reasons just no. than his ability behind I, that. I didn't see that United team of 1989. No. Vaguely, yeah, I vaguely. Re- 1990 was my first year. Yeah, well, um, yeah. I vaguely, I remember, I remember, I remember sort of games, and I remember sort of instances. And I remember the the worst. You know, you still had Big Norm, you still had Brian Robson. But you had players like, you know, I remember was it Graham Hogg, players like that, um, Peter Davenport, Terry Gibson. I mean, these were, these just weren't good players. I'm sorry, you know, someone may tweet me and say, mm, like, so, but they weren't. In this little transitional period that we're in now, and my argument is, Ollie probably isn't Fergie, right? 99% chance. 99% chance he, he isn't up and be down your throat. <laughs> <laughs> but if it took Fergie seven years to win a title, yeah, why doesn't everyone else get fifteen? Yeah, <laughs> like, that's, that's a fair point. If you know what I mean? like, just paint what happened with Fergie. So he took over. I think he came eleventh first season. Eight, yeah, eighty six to eighty seven. He, he, he weathered the storm. His first full season, I think, eighty seven to eight. Second. His first, oh, sorry, second full season, eighty seven to eighty eight. Second, Came yeah, second. you're right. Yeah, second. 88 to 89, I think. 11th. Was 11th. That was the season where everyone was like, and then 89 to 90, the cup 13th. saved him. Yeah. But, but you know. He went, uh, uh, was it 11th? Second. So just think about <laughs> what everyone would be saying. Yeah. Progress. Yeah. This little fucker gets yeah. it. We're hard to beat because yeah. we only won 1 0, didn't we? Yeah. Um, like I said, I wasn't there. I, just, I, just, I read up on stuff. Like, so I know it was 1 0. One uh, that was just what we did. Then when he goes from second to eleventh, now you put that over a twenty nineteen template, he's well, gone. You look at it this way, right? You had guys with well, a guy with a bed sheet with yeah, with a marker or whatever. Can imagine paint. your missus walking on you writing on yeah. a bed sheet. What Sad you doing it's crap. Yeah, I'm just going to Old Trafford tonight because Twitter's not been invented yet. Yeah, so I need that's to perfectly bend. normal. Yeah, do you know what I mean? <laughs> right. You're not seeing the kids again. <laughs> 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 I mean, like, but that's like you've not even put a new sheet on your dickhead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing fucking washing. You're sorting that laundry out. But this is what I mean. But that guy in the Stratford end or wherever it was, he did it. People weren't telling him to take it down. People weren't f- throwing punches at him, saying what you're doing. People were probably letting him get on with it because he agreed. So that was where it was where we we're at. And you can argue that yeah, Fergie inherited a mess. But if you scratch the surface again. I think United the season the full the full season before Fergie took over finished fourth, fourth fourth third third was what Ron Atkinson finished and, and he was in cup finals yeah and won two cups so he's in the in the process so it wasn't a complete disaster yes the team needed strengthening and there's a lot of weaknesses in that team just imagine but, how like fan channels would be reacting to oh, that this that was Scottish prick yeah do it in a yeah. farmers <laughs> league can't fucking do it here he this doesn't have a Aberdeen. fucking clue yeah. hey. <laughs> He's to fuck off back to Scotland where he can fucking do it. Can't do it at a big club. You know exactly what everyone would be <laughs> reacting would, like. It'd be, it'd so be I that. want to just err on the side of like, this job is going to take fucking time. If it took, okay. you know, with what Klopp's doing, it took time and money. You think about it, right? When Klopp got to the point where he had a really good attack, he had a, a fairly decent defence, he had a midfield that he'd ass- an okay midfield or a midfield he assembled. They still went out and give him a £75 million defender. They still went out and let him buy two midfielders. Do you know what I mean? The proper And then and another then goalkeeper. Pushed them onto yeah, the another goalkeeper to replace one he'd already brought in. They proper backed him. When Pep, one of his big things said, I'm bringing in Claudio Bravo, get rid of Joe Hart, who's, you know, been Mr. Reliable. The yeah, and the fans loved him because Claudio Bravo's my man. He's played for me at Man. He's done all this. Yeah, anyway, don't worry about that. I'm a new yeah. keeper. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it was like, oh, he's actually, okay. he's, he's actually terrible. Sorry, can I go and spend another 50 million on a different one? Yeah, no worries. Yeah, no problem. United. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to buy another six fullbacks. You only play two at a time, you know. Yeah. yeah. Tell them what to do. That, well, this is it. But City, 
they had a full back, didn't they? Have like cliche and collar of and all that, but we were like, Ashley Young's Min. age. Yeah. And they were like, I want to replace him. Yeah, no, no worries. I don't know what we call that, Ashley Young. But we still persevere with these backups who were gone. And I'll admit he's gone. I I've, 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 I love Ashley Young. I stick up for him. But I admit he's, you know, it's a season too far. It, 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 listen, I, I, let's not get into that. Right? But we, he's still here for a reason. It's not, you know, we haven't replaced him. No, so why not? Why didn't we go out and go for some other players? Because it's like, okay, we bought three defenders, job done. Oh, two defenders, sorry, job done. It's not really, is it? So. No, and people will go, and the, here's the nightmare, it's because we have spent nearly a fucking billion post-Fergie and have got basically fuck all to show for it, <laughs> right? We've just gone on like a fucking lottery winner that first Saturday, <laughs> haven't we? It's like they've ever the lot all out. Like uh, just, he's now signing yeah. on in jail or whatever. Just like, where's all that Like when you fucking first get paid and you're like, where's all that money you're like, I don't know. It's like when you get your student loan. <laughs> I was at the uni, you used to get a student loan. The rent's due. None of us had had it in the house. We, we all got like, a student loan say like 1,500 quid each. Where's it going? Oh, bought some beats. <laughs> <laughs> like, honestly, that's we, what it's like. We're like, hey, hey, we? yeah, we'll have a bit of that. Falcao, yeah, we'll have a bit of that. Sanchez wants 500k a week. Not a problem, mate. We're, we're wedged. Do you know what I mean? Hang on a minute. The team's rubbish. We, we owe loads of money out and we've got no more to spend. What are we going to do? Not only that, we're not even paying off. We're, we're, we're DFS special in this shit. <laughs> Zero percent interest for fucking twenty two years, and maybe we'll pay it then. We're having like, to give players to to, to Inter <laughs> um, um, that we haven't even paid for. Yeah, <laughs> we've not even paid for them. No. maybe that's the idea. Is when someone comes to repossess them, we're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> mm, but like, this is the issue: is that, and this is where it comes back to the ownership, where they haven't had a director of football, and it's difficult to do when you lurch from. Like and we have probably lurched. I would say Van Gaal and Oli are probably similarly aligned philosophies. But fucking Jose ain't. So you've gone way, way, way yeah, no, with you your philosophy. Time. Yeah. And now you're wondering why your fucking squad looks like an absolute bag of spanners. You, you, you strengthen as well when you're in a position of strength. And if you look at it, like we were, we were the reigning Premier League champions under David Moyes, and we gave him Manu and Fellaini. And a, and a matter in January when we were already 12 points off. And I don't think matter was David Moyes' choice. No, I think that was a shiny toy that Edward wanted to fly I, I in think, on an helicopter. I think Fellaini probably was his choice. Yeah. But I also think that, well, I know he wanted more than that. He just couldn't get it over the fucking line. Yeah, you know, it was just nonsense. And if, had we, at that time... We didn't get Herrera, in, we tried to get yeah, Herrera exactly. and fucked it up. Yeah, we'd have brought in Herrera. We'd have brought in, I don't know, we were linked with Contra or, or whatever. Just some, some just strengthened... Just made the squad better, then we would have had a chance of being in the mix for the title. But do you know what we would but have we done in about 2010, 2011? We would have bought in Ramos. Yeah. Or someone of that ilk. You might not have got Ramos out of Real Madrid, but we would have brought someone of that ilk because Rio was very obviously on the way out. Yeah. Vidic was the same age. I think they were like a year apart. Yeah, yeah. They're the same age. Evra is the same age. Yeah. You had three quarters of a, the, one of the best back fours I've ever seen all come into like the end of their time at the same time. And the trouble was as well, you had players that were sort of in between. I know you mentioned it before, like Johnny Evans, Chris Smalling. No, they Mullen. were perfect backup players. Yeah, that's, that's it. That's it, mate. Yeah, I agree with that. Backup. And now they start. <laughs> yeah, and all of a sudden. And also, <laughs> they haven't got Rio next to them no. or Vidic or Evra. Whispering in the air, they've got Phil Jones next Mate, to them. Or Chris got... Smalling and Phil Jones and Johnny Evans looked world class next to those players. Yeah. You, know, you put, you've got Evra, Johnny Evans, Rio, Raphael. Yeah. Sound. Yeah, not a problem. I'm not worried about that. Nah. I'm happy with that. Do you know what I mean? But if all of a sudden you take. Are we Carrick in front of them? Yeah. Perfect. But then all of a sudden it's like, right, we're going to take, 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 take Rio out. out. We'll put Jones in. <laughs> right, all right. Oh, okay. Uh, Ever's gone. Ever's gone. Is Ashley Young? Is Ashley Young? Oh, I don't know. Ashley, Ashley Carrick come and have a seat. We'll put Fred there. Yeah. Oh, hang on a minute. This isn't. This isn't great. And also, you know, we're just generally not dominating the game anyway because our attack's not as strong as it was. So it's just, yeah, mate. It was a. It was a bit of a mess. So anyway, we were doing a preview. <laughs> just um, should we though. do a fucking predict to the level? Yeah, let's figure. Right, weird shit. Newcastle shit. There's there's the, the talk of Newcastle now. But let's just get on to predict to the level. They know. are shit. Although they have got more points than Rafa got, which if you say Newcastle fans will fume at. He's, they all think Bruce don't know what he's doing. Rafa was a god. Rafa was shit as well, lads. Rafa just knew what he was doing when he took it out, mate. Making silly demands. He knew that Mike Ashley was never going to meet, so he could sail off into the sunset. Did he ask for custard it? creams during meetings? Because if you go to a meeting, there's no biscuits. There's a bad meeting. Oh no, I think he offered. Why? Why? What? 
I not necessarily crust of creeps, but it's what they represent. All right, okay. Because if there's a meeting with biscuits, everyone's all friendly. If you go to a meeting, there's no biscuits, and everyone's stood up, you're in the f- you're gonna get. I paid. hate when like some sometimes like, when there's food on the table in a meeting, I think God, this means this means I'm gonna be here for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why is there food. three meals? Yeah, yeah, no. Is that a sleeping bag? And I've not done any research. <laughs> <laughs> Just sit and nod and agree. Um, right, do you want my eleven? Go on. Then. I said it earlier, and I'm, I'm not being melodramatic. So I'm not prone to hyperbole, as you know. But this is probably the weakest. 11 I've had to pick from <laughs> one of these previews in a Premier League game I've done weaker ones for Europa and all that but genuinely I'm not just digging people out because of the injuries we've got and the way we are at the minute this is my 11 David De Gea this sort of goes against a little bit what you were saying earlier but I'm, I'm going to do it anyway I've got Axel at right back I've got Maguire in the middle with Lindelof and I've got Rowe at left back I've got McTominay I've gone for Garner I know because you're just hopeful not gonna happen. I know. And I've gone Pereira as a three, and I've gone for Chong, Rashford, and James up front. So you've got a mixture of inexperienced players that are out of form, and one or two who are okay just, at just the minute. Shit, yeah, and then, and then yeah, some that aren't very good. <laughs> um, so that's where we're at. That's my eleven, and that is genuinely right. That's me trying to think who's fit, who can play another game. Who's just played on Thursday night? Who? can do a job in what position. This isn't me trying to be funny. This is like the strongest I could get it. I don't think anyone's laughing, mate. No, I'm not. I'm um, right. Let me have a quick gangster here now at my team. I went with uh, Big Dave in that, controversially. I went with Wamba Saka. I thought I he's don't, out I don't know. Right, okay, fair enough. So it's tonsillitis. Have a fucking strep sore. Why is everyone out. getting tonsillitis all of a sudden? <sighs> Maguire and Lindelof with Axel left back. Right, okay. Now the issue with that as a back four... Is it's about us attacking as a nothing very attacking. <laughs> Sorry, I just my mind's blank. It's about as attacking as Manchester United. Yeah. It's just shit in it. In terms of like off the bottom, like defensively, it should keep a clean sheet that. Yeah, I can live with that about five. Yeah. Definitely. That should keep a clean sheet. You want someone to cross it? Oh, you didn't ask about that. <laughs> oh no, 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 no. You should have booked that. Mm. No, so that's not gonna attack. So because it's not gonna attack. But it is defensively strong. And because also we do need to shake something up, and I think the way to do that would be a different formation. Go with a midfield three. Yeah. Controversially. Now, unfortunately, we don't really have a lot of options in midfield. So it's a load of guff again. Mate, I was it's struggling. McMayonnaise in a six. Yeah. Matic and Fred. Like, yeah. what else can I go with? Yeah. Like, like, the only reason I didn't do that is because I just thought, are they going to be able to play again in a sort of space of time? But. I think international break coming up. Yeah, I think so I think if I'm being genuine, I think there's more chance of one of them playing than Ghana. I just like you said. I just feel, you yeah, know. just fancy being different. Fancy, yeah. So, I mean, ideally, you want to play a pair of eights that are going to be attacking and you know, like creative and have incisive passes into the final third. Unfortunately, we don't have any of them players, so it's going to be Fred and Matic. We passed all that. We've done all that. Fuck we've bought the t-shirt. We, we, we're beyond it now. And we're then different. the forward three. He's not going to play Greenwood again. And no. on on the, why can't you play the youngsters again? Now, I, I chat to some of the youngsters and very eye-opening. They physically struggle with the pace of this game. And that is the, the reason that youngsters get drip-fed in. Um, it's not the physicality in terms of like your shoulder to shoulder with people. It's literally that like the game is just another intensity notch yeah. Yeah. that takes a little bit of getting used to. Like the players are dead after it. Um, so forward three wise go on say it out loud Pereira yeah who I am not feeling but like you go okay do you know what? is he going to be Chong it's not going to be Chong is it well I've gone with Chong but I know you know again it's yeah hopeful right? well, yeah. or just trying to be different so, yeah right? just I'm, so, I, I don't know at the minute Pereira James on the left yeah I've gone Marcus up front like there's yeah. no other options really it's sad as well man because it's like you know, in an ideal world, Marcus for me would be. Getting, I know he's got an international break coming up, but I would, I would take him out. You know, exactly. I would take him out of the fire line, but we can't. How how does Pogba need a little bit of extra time off when Marcus is injured as fuck? When he went down with his groin the other day, Ollie's like be out for a long time. So he missed the game. Wait, do you remember <laughs> when he was hobbling about against the Scousers and he was back a week later? He's not been right since. No, then. and he's like, not. 
I can tell you now that like, he's got to have surgery on that ankle and they just don't know when to stop him. Like when he's done his groin, I was like, brilliant. Like get fixed now. Go fuck off. Do an MOT on yourself. Like get this is the thing, right? If you want to slag off Marcus, right, and criticise his ability or say his performance aren't good enough, I'm all for it. But let's not question the kid's art. Jesus. And I've seen people do that. And I just, uh, the mind boggles that anyone can question whether that <laughs> lad running around limping Try to give his all, Mate, you know, he's giving what he company can. Company nearly United. fucking broke him in half when he yeah. when he hit him off the ball. And then he was playing a week later, yeah. and against Chelsea, he goes off with a shoulder injury. And what happened? His shoulder was already strapped up, but we needed him. Do you know what I mean? So let listen. I'm not saying he's you can't criticize him. You can, but I just think some of the criticism he gets for certain things is just nonsensical. People call him lazy. <sighs> that. that analysis is lazy. So there. I'm not even going to ask you about Newcastle because they're in the same sort of guff we are at the minute. Yeah, um, it's just a tale of two shit. Uh, Joe, you know what we'll say is, who do you reckon gets that first Ollie last day, Bruce? Well, that is a good question. Follow me. I think... <laughs> so, so bad. I'm sorry. Massive pause there. You're going to have to edit this because I just... Every time I think of one reason, Bollocks I think of another one. I hate to say it, right? But I think with Ollie. And I don't want to see all these stats. I would give him time, and I've said this all the time. I think if we lose against Newcastle and lose against Liverpool, he's in serious trouble. Serious but what's trouble. more likely to happen is we'll probably scrab a 1-0 win against Newcastle yeah. and then lose to Liverpool. Yeah, I think he'll be okay now. <laughs> yeah. So, Bruce is your answer. You've worked it out for me. I'm going to go with Bruce. Jesus. Yeah. Uh, uh, Ryan, give us your score prediction for this absolute clash of the Titans. It's Super Sunday. It will be Super Sunday, won't it? Yeah. Listen, we don't win. What, Super, Super home. Sunday? I'm going to go with... No, we, we've got like six away games coming up. There's going to be one of them that we win. Surely. <laughs> I don't know, mate. I, Surely. I will never say United are going to lose. I certainly won't say United are going to lose against Newcastle, so I'm going to go with one all. Wanker. Mate, I'm sorry, right? Listen, I got pelters for saying we'd get, go through against Rochdale on penalties. What happened? <laughs> hey, you, I think you say nil-nil and I said penalties, and it was right. I so, so, there you go. Um... 1-0 penalty. <laughs> this is the problem, man. You look at that team and you go, there's no match winners. There's no spark. There's no one where the opposition go, we need to keep him quiet today. Do you remember like when you used to go to games and like you, you almost, you wouldn't say you felt sorry for the manager, but you must have thought the opposition manager has got a right idea. Okay. Keep Rooney busy. Or what about Ronaldo? All right, keep Ronaldo and Rooney busy. What about Tevez? This is what City have at the minute. Oh, we'll you keep, go, yeah. right. I'm gonna I'm gonna mark De Bruyne out of the game. Yeah. Cool. Bernardo Silva's gonna be fingering your bum hole. Uh, right. right. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll deal with Bernardo Silva. Sweet. Well, who's getting Aguero then? If I'm getting him. Yeah. Well, I can't. I've got Sterling. So it's like. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Meh. Yeah. And now it's like, tell you what, you mark Ra- Marcus. You two. You two. Mark Paul. Done. There you go. <laughs> what about the fullbacks? Don't fucking uh, worry about the fullbacks. Just say, get out. <laughs> <laughs> They're not gonna be in our half. Oh, okay. Not an issue. Mate, against Arsenal, Adam Maguire was go, one yeah. of our attackers. So you go, yeah, again, like, what we're we going to do on set pieces? Mark Maguire. Yeah. Leave it. Yeah. <laughs> just, yeah, just three of you piling at Maguire. Yeah. Get in his way. He's either going to edit down to no cunt, yeah. <laughs> or he's going to edit, and, but we'll have that many around him that it won't be on target. Yeah. So don't fucking worry about it. All yeah. right, sound. Are we going to beat them? Oh, don't worry about that either. Yeah. We'll, just, we'll just, get, there'll be chances. We'll get a corner. Just crowd the keeper. Do something. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> just the linesman's in on it. What are they? Oh my god! It's the hope that kills. It's the hope that kills you, man. I just, you know, I say this every time. Every time me and you together, at least we saw some great times. That's it. Like I can go to my grave and know that I've seen thirteen championships. I mean, man, come on. There's literally that. only two clubs in the country who've seen thirteen championships. I mean. Well, Arsenal about eleven. Something like that, yeah. They're no, never, they're never going to answer that any time Some are fucking inconsequential is yeah. what they're on. They're not in our league on that one. So, yeah, it's, it's, it is what it is, isn't it, mate? Do you know what I mean? But listen, after that one-all draw at Newcastle, things will turn around. I'm confident. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, can I do a plug as well before we go? Yeah, if you want. We're I mean, up for... It's, uh, it's full-time devil, so... Yeah, yeah oh, yeah. yeah, yeah isn't it? <laughs> We're going to do a plug. It's the Northwest Football Awards. We've been nominated for Best Fan Media Channel. And we're up against Red Men TV and others. <laughs> but we've lost to the Scousers a few times now. So if you get a chance, give us a vote. And they go turbo on it, so go and vote. Yeah. So and also, Kate Zellum's up for an award. Luke Shaw's up for an award. And Mason Green's up for an award. So let's make it a clean sweep of Manchester United wins. Got to win summer. Come on. There you go. Thanks. Thanks for letting me do that. <laughs> that 
I want to end it on a positive. Um, Global warming is going to kill us all soon, so there is Or that. Trump might, yeah, so there's that. Before. Can we initiate Armageddon? Yep. Before middle of May. So we never actually get to see him crowned. Yeah. Just as the nukes start flying, we're like, 20 times, 20 <laughs> times. <laughs> right, bollocks, later, subscribe in a bit.